Welcome to this video. My name is Stefan Juchmas and today I show you how to install the MBS Sojo plugins on Windows. Additionally, I will show you a few examples where the plugins are used. The plugin files are available on our website www.monkeybreadsoftware.de. On our website, click on the tab Sojo plugins. Here you find the download area. You can choose between DMG Archive for Apple and ZIP Archive for Windows and Linux. All archives contain the same files. So if you work on two systems, you can use the downloaded files on the other system too. We download the files as ZIP Archive. This can take a few minutes. In this time, I would like to present the documentation. Each class and its corresponding methods and properties of the MES Sojo plugins are described in the documentation. To access the online documentation, click on Documentation above the download area. Here we see the different topics for which there are classes in the plugins. For example, if we are interested in the topic barcodes, we click on barcode. Here we see a list of all classes that are related to this topic. Below the classes are the methods, properties, events and constants that this class contains. If you want to have an overview of a certain class, click on the class. Here we can see for which platforms the class is usable. Additionally, we can see which plugin is needed to use this class. More about this later. We also find a short description of the class and often there are examples of how to use this class. Below the information box, we can see the individual contents of the class, such as properties, methods, shared methods, constants or events. We can also click on them individually to get more information. Additionally, examples are listed and linked in which the class is used. If we click on one of the links, we get the source code of the example. Here you can see how the class is implemented and used. But now back to the class overview. Here you can see additional articles and blog entries in which the class is mentioned. If you click on a single method, you get a list of all class methods. Again we get information about the suitable platforms and the plugin. We have a description that describes exactly what the function does and where the special characteristics are. Often there is an example in which the method is used. For example, you can see it here. In the header of these information boxes, we see the method name. And in the brackets, we see the parameters with the required type that must be passed to the method. We see that we have values that are immediately assigned with equal signs. These are default values that are set as parameter values if none other value is defined for this parameter. We have also functions that can return a value. We can see it here. Behind the brackets follows an other S and then the matching data type. 
that the result has. Our download is now complete and we can start the installation of the plugins. First of all, we open the archive. And there's the folder ambiguous Sudo plugins. And there's the folder plugins. We see that the plugins are not a single file, but several different files. Which files you need depends on which classes you want to use in your program. For example, if you only want to work with functionalities from the barcode plugin, you only need the barcode plugin. We can copy this plugin now. We look for the program folder of Sojo. Here is the right version. And insert our plugin file in the plugin folder. Then we have to close Sojo when it is open and open it again. The opening takes a little bit longer at the first restart because the plugin is loaded. This is not the case at later starts. Now you can use the classes that belong to the plugin barcode. Of course you can put all the plugin files in the folder and the program will get the information it needs. But if you decide against it, it is important that you pay attention to the dependencies of the plugins among each other. You can find this list on our website. Here you can see which plugins you have to put into the extension folder. For example, if you want to use a class that comes from the Mac 64 bit plugin, you need to put at least the MBS main plugin, the MBS Mac Cloud plugin, the MBS Mac Base plugin, the MBS Mac Cocoa plugin, the MBS Mac Controls plugin, the MBS Mac CG plugin and the MBS Mac CF plugin in the plugin folder of Sojo. Don't worry, if you only need a part of the MBS Mac 64-bit plugin, only that part will be built in. The other parts are not included, but you still need to have them for compilation. Now let's us take a look at a few examples. The examples are downloaded along with the plugin files in the archive. They are located in the folder examples. The examples are divided into folders according to the used plugins. Let's start with a barcode example. So we click on barcode. Here we distinguish between whether we are dealing with the creation of a barcode or its recognition. We want to have a look at an example in which barcodes are created. For this we open the folder generate and the file generate barcodes. First we look at the window. In the window there is a list. This list has to be filled with different barcode types. The example has an open event. It is executed when the file is opened. We see that in the open event the method test is called several times. Parameters are passed to this method. Let's take a closer look to this method. The method has three input parameters. First type label as string, then type as integer and text as string. At the beginning of the method, we create an instance of the class barcode generator MBS. So we want to generate a barcode right away. We must specify the barcode type before generating the barcode. This we write in the property symbology. We get the barcode type with the second parameter type as integer. This can be for example 58 for the QR code. Alternatively, you can also enter the constant called barcode QR code. For each barcode that can be specified, 
there is also a constant that fits. Then we can create the barcode by calling the method encode from the class. We pass the text that the barcode should contain. In the property picture in the instance, the barcode should now be stored as an image. We can store it in a variable of the type picture. If there was an error, then we identify which error it is and enter an error text. Afterwards, we add a row to the list in the window, which contains the description of the barcode received as input parameter of the method. In the second column, the content of the barcode and finally the error text. If we have a value in the variable pick, that means an image of the barcode, the entry in the last column is overwritten. This is done by the cell text paint event, in which the barcode is drawn into the graphic event in the cell. Now we can let the example run and see how the single barcodes are created. Let's move to the next example, this time from the Dyna PDF topic. The Dyna PDF plugin is a special case among the plugins. It must be portrayed separately and is not included in the complete package. There are four different licenses for Dyna PDF which contain different functionalities depending on the license type. A list which license type and which functionalities are available can be found on our website. Now we have to add the Dyna PDF plugin to our plugin folder. We can open the example now. In this example, we want to display the plain text of a PDF document. For this, we have a text area in the window. And above this, we have a slider to select which PDF page we want to see as plain text. The examples in which we use Dyna PDF, there is the class My Dyna PDF MBS. This class takes in this case care of troubleshooting and can be easily copied and customized. Let's have a look at the open event of the window. In the window property PDF of the type of our My Dyna PDF MBS class, we add a new instance of this class. In the next step, we specify the type of license we work with. Then we create a new PDF working environment. For the import, we set a few more flags. Only the non-interactive text should be imported and the text should be imported as page and not as template. We then set the flags there. Now we check if the document we want to import the text from exists. The name of the document is dynapdf underscore help PDF. If it does not exist or cannot be opened, we close the program at this point. Otherwise, we import the PDF into our working environment. We set the maximum value of the slider to the number of pages we want to import. Next, we start the method load. We pass the page number 1 as parameter to this method. In this method, we make the first page editable. This means we can work with the content of the first page and call, for example, a method to extract the text of the page and display it to our text box in the window. Then we finish editing the page. When we move the slider, the event value change is called. 
In this event, we call load with the required page number. If we now run the program, we can go through the pages and see in our text area the plain text that matches the page. I have shown two simple examples in the example folder, but we have also included more complex examples. They can be initialized in the same way. Comments in the examples can help you to do this. If you test the plugin for a while, you see a dialog that says that you're using an unregistered plugin. If you don't want to see this dialog anymore, or if you want to build your project, you need to buy a license of the plugins on our website. You can buy single theme plugins like the barcode plugin or you can buy a complete package, which contains all plugins listed here. If you want to use several plugins, it is often more economical to buy a complete package. Some of the plugins, like the camera or the data type plugins, are only available with the complete version. These plugins are then marked with a star. If you buy a license and the plugin is registered, you can use the functionalities of the main plugin for free. This is free for every registered plugin. I will now show you how to register the plugins. If you have ordered a license, you will get an email with a line that looks like this. We have a user, the license type, in this case now a complete license, the expiration date, that means the date limit when you can't use Neo updates anymore, and last but not least your license key. A real license key is much longer, but this is an example. You can now add the following lines to your app open event. The register MBS plugin method registers the plugin and return a Boolean value. So if the plugin is registered, the return value is true. If the return value is not true, we get the message MBS plugin number not registered. If you chip a program, your license key should not be in plain text because it is easier for hackers to use this key for their purposes. For example, you can use mathematics to encrypt parts of your registration data. For example, you can replace the 123 with, with 276, multiplicate with 17 minus 4590, plus 3, multiplicate with 7. You can also set variables in which you can assign parts of the original string and then append them to each other. So for ABC we have equals A Epsilon S string equals B dim set S string equals C. 
ABC from X plus Epsilon plus Z. So you can also use ASCII characters so that the 4 for example is char 52. A combination of these methods could look like this. Now the calculation is string plus x epsilon z, that is abc, plus char 52. And because we want to test it, we write that into a message box and we need also an x epsilon z and then we can run the project and we can see we have our license key one two three abc four of course you can also use different algorithms like base 64 or so on for this, an example is included in our plugins. The important thing is that you encrypt your key individually. The example is for orientation and not a one-to-one -one replica. If you have any questions about our plugins, feel free to contact us. We wish you a lot of fun with the MBS Sojo plugins. Thank you for watching this video.